This is video three for our Keith Herring figure sculpture. Today we're going to talk about plaster. We're going to get messy. So before we even jump into materials and things like that, you need to remove all of your jewelry from your hands. Okay, so if you're wearing any kind of rings, bracelets, you're going to need to make sure you remove them because this step can get very messy. You want to make sure that you have an apron on your body and a placemat on your table before you even get started. This right here, okay, becomes really hard. This is called a plaster gauze. If you've ever had a cast on your arm, this is what they use. They put a foam or um, foam thing under your arm and then put this on top. This gets activated as soon as it hits water. So you want to keep your um, plaster gauze a little away from the water and you don't want to splash it on here because then that activates it. Once it's activated, it has about 10 to 15 minutes of work time and that's it. Okay, so this stage you're going to want to do very quickly um, and efficiently. And what's going to happen is you're going to, when it's done, it's going to harden like this. Okay, it's going to be very hard and then we're going to end up painting these. Okay, so the first thing is, is you have your armature. Okay, you got to make sure at this stage that your armature is freestanding. Freestanding means that it can stand by itself. If you touch it, it does not fall over. You don't want your person to lay on their back. Okay, so this one, I had him doing a leap, but I changed him to almost like a stretching, like, like almost like a straddle, if you can see he's like this, but he can stand up. Okay, this is very important because this is three dimensional and you want to make sure that your figure is free standing. All right, so this is how the plaster works. You're going to first take the plaster, you're going to dip it into the water, okay, and then you're going to kind of drag it on the edge of the bucket. This is so that your water should not be dripping. This should not be dripping at all. If it is, then it has too much water on it. Then what you're going to do is you're going to almost like wrap this, almost like you're wrapping a, a little baby. This is your little baby, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to kind of rub in all of the little holes. If you see the little holes in here, you want to rub these in, okay? These are the plaster holes. And what you're going to do is you're going to continue to wrap your entire figure. Dip, drag it around this. It is okay if this wrinkles and things like that. It is okay if that does that. All right, you can wrap it around the head. If you have some extra, you can wrap it around the body. Okay, remember, this is what it's going to look like in the end. So if you have a lot of wrinkles and bumps and you don't like that, this is where you need to make sure your plaster is nice and neat. If this is too big for you to get around areas, what you can do is you can take your hands and you pinch them at the top and you can actually rip this before it is activated to get a skinnier strip. Once it's activated, you cannot no longer work with it. So I'm dripping it on the edge and maybe you need a skinnier area to wrap around the leg. So I'm gonna keep wrapping it around the leg. What you're gonna do is you're gonna coat your entire figure two times. You need two layers of plaster on your figure. Once this is done and you're completely covered, what you want to make sure is your person is still free standing. If it's not, you need to move your person before it dries to make sure it's free standing. You are then going to, after this guy is completely done and you've done two coats, two coats, you are going to put it in the back of the room, in the located spot where Mrs. Ford tells you. You can then go wash your hands and clean up your table. If you have any questions about this step, please just ask. 